Even though we call FIFA 22 a football game, which is based on passing, a lot of people complain about the passing. But have they really thought about this game having a different passing meta? Hi, my name is Khan, also known as Jedi Jester, and today we are going to explore the most useful passing styles in FIFA 22 that will change your attacking buildup completely. We are also going to put an end to a very controversial question on if the L1 double triangle combo exists, so make sure you watch the video until the end. Like everything, passing has basic rules as well. First of all, you need to be very patient while you're passing. Just because you can press the pass button doesn't mean you have to use it all the time. Carelessly passing around will end up with you losing the ball, so also taking a look at what the defenders are doing is going to help you decide what to do next. It is also important to mention that this year the passing ability heavily relies on the passing stats of the player. That means you can't take every pass with every player. You might need to take one or two extra touches on the ball to be able to dodge the opponent's interception and get the most optimal passing opportunity. You need to pay more attention to these rules this year compared to the previous titles since the defenders are much more capable of intercepting passes. In addition, normal ground passes are often too slow and easily intercepted this year when trying to pass through tight gaps. There is a clear workaround for this in which you increase the power of the pass which brings us to our first passing technique. Driven passes are the strongest in the current meta. They seem to be much more viable since you give some power to the pass, which reduces the traveling time of the ball from one player to the other, and that also reduces the time that the defender has to be able to react towards the passing lane. Even though driven passes are really strong, there is only one thing that you have to watch out for. The path between the passer and the receiver has to be clear, so if any defender stays on that line, the pass is going to be intercepted anyways. The input is very simple, you just have to hold on to the R1, RB button while passing to be able to send a driven pass. That way you power up the pass and increase the chance that it will go through. In this example, we can clearly see the speed difference between a normal X pass and a driven pass. Even though the driven passes are used for overall the pitch, there are a couple of scenarios where they become lethal. In a situation where you continue to look to break up an opposition defense, which is heavily fortified, you need to find the smallest gap. These gaps will appear for a really short period of time and even if you see them, normal passes wouldn't be enough to get the ball to the desired player. However, since the driven passes are much faster than the normal ones, it is more likely that you have a successful pass. So in this very clear example, I have only one player in the box who could potentially be a threat to the opposition. He's being covered by a lot of defenders and there's a defender between my current dribbler and that player inside the box. With a quick skill move, I create the optimal passing opportunity towards my striker. However, if I send a normal short pass, the defender could potentially cut off that pass by moving a selected defender into the passing lane, or he can switch to the other center back to be able to confront the receiver. With a powerful driven pass, I make sure that my striker receives the ball as soon as possible so that current and selected defender can't get a touch on the ball and just because the opponent tried to intercept it with that specific defender, he wasn't able to switch the center back in time so my striker found the opportunity to turn around and scored the goal. Another deadly scenario would be to use it from the side, especially if you're planning to go all the way down to the goal line. Once you get the ball from a side angle, a simple strong driven pass could end up directly in front of the goal and the receiver has to make the final touch into the goal. The method of going to the goal line and passing the ball in has been used a lot in the previous FIFAs with different passing styles, but this year it is best used with the driven passes. Remember, you have to watch the defender's movement and pass accordingly. Some of the defenders are aware of the danger that the driven passes create and they gamble to block the passing lane. In these types of situations, don't blindly go for the driven pass, instead observe and go for the shot. Before diving deeper into the video, I just want to remind you that we are offering individual coaching services available for almost every skill level. Our elite, top 200 or pro player coaches will help you understand the basic and the advanced techniques of FIFA 22 while analyzing your gameplay to be able to take you to the next level. Our data-driven coaching will identify your strengths and weaknesses in the game and will help you to become stronger this year. If you're interested in finding out the way to unlock your full potential, make sure to check the link down in the description or click the icon in the top right corner. The 
driven loop through ball is safe to say much stronger compared to the last few years. It is basically a combination of a lob through ball, which can be performed by pressing the L1 and triangle buttons at the same time, and the driven through ball, which can be performed by pressing R1 and the triangle at the same time. Combining those two means, combining the inputs as well, so a driven lob through ball can be performed by pressing the triangle button while holding onto the L1 and R1 buttons together at the same time. Compared to the lobbed through balls, the driven lobbed ones have lesser height, but therefore much more speed. That means this mechanic becomes lethal if it's sent to a running player who has relatively good space in front of him to receive the ball. Let me go in detail with a very good example. In this position, we pass the ball towards the wing back with L1 so that our initial passer throws himself forward for a run after he sends the ball. Until he moves himself into a perfect receiving position, we need to hold on to the ball and carry it a bit forward with the wing back. As the running player reaches his maximum acceleration to get on the same level with the last defender, we see that he has some space in front of him, so we could send the ball into that space. We have three options here. Either we go for a driven through ball from the ground, which could be interrupted by the selected midfielder or afterwards by the center back, or we could go for a lob through ball, which will chip the ball over the players with a great height, or with a combination of both, which is driven lob through ball. Let's take a closer look at the receiver and the center back near him. Our intention is to pass the ball as fast as possible in front of the runner, and since the center back isn't in the passing lane, we don't need that much of a height for the ball when the pass is played. In that case, the driven lob through ball is the exact thing we need. Like we mentioned before, it is much faster than the lob through ball, and since the height is much lesser, there you see it. The ball lands directly in front of the player, and because of the lower height, he controls the ball and he shoots it into the net. The most important thing here is that you don't lose any speed while trying to control the ball. Therefore, agile strikers who are making their way right into the box, or the fast wingers who are running down the wing are the perfect targets if this mechanic is used from a fair distance. But we advise you to avoid using this mechanic in very tight situations where you have to chip the ball over the defender. Then you should be using only the lob through ball. Lob balls have been very useful since the start of FIFA 22, especially before getting out from your own half. By now you should have seen a lot of players who switch sides from one wing back to the other one before advancing to the opposition territory. The reason for that is the structure of the defense. Once you have the ball in either one of the wings, you will immediately see that the opposition team shifts toward that side of the pitch as a whole and sometimes it gets really hard to build up from there. Therefore, switching sides from one wing back to the other one by only using the square button can quickly get you to the opposition half since that side will be much more empty. Let's take a look at an example. As you can see, the opposition team is very active on the lower side of the pitch and we won't be able to get anything from there. I decided to change the ball's direction and play the ball first towards the center back and from there to the winger on the other side which forces the whole defending squad to shift from the lower side to the upper side. While moving, the defensive shape becomes vulnerable and I'm able to move forward. After that, I tried to go for simple passes and eventually get inside the box. Switching sides made this position possible. Lob balls can also be used to break the pressure since the opposition players will throw themselves forward and that creates some space behind them. For a brief moment, you just have to take a look at where the main pressure is coming from and then turn towards the other direction to be able to find an open player. You could also use the square button to send crosses inside the box, especially towards the back post, which we think is very powerful this year. Once you're running down the wing, make sure you wait a couple of seconds before the winger on the other side gets into the box and power the cross with the square button between 2-3 to three bars and there you have it, an easy goal. There is also a special method where lobbed passes can become really powerful if you send the player directly inside the box and time the lobbed pass perfectly. Let's see how it's done with another example. To be able to send this lobbed ball, we need to make sure that one of our players runs into the box. Therefore, we pass the ball with the winger towards the wing back while holding the L1 button to make the winger run, but directly afterwards, we trigger the L1 button while we point the other midfielder with the left analog stick to make him also run just in case the winger becomes unsuccessful. As the midfielder approaches the box, we want to make sure that our wing back holds onto the ball and in the meanwhile faces 90 degrees away from the intended passing lane, so once the midfielder gets into position, we could send a diagonal lob ball towards him. With two bars of power, we press the square button and it works like a charm. 
This is a very good build up tactic and you should learn it as soon as possible. There are some people who say that an awesome new passing style exists which has a combination of tapping the triangle button twice while holding on to the L1 button. They say this pass is incredibly strong and stable and is much better than normal lob through ball. Does it even exist though? This controversial question has split the community into two so we want to put an end to it. When you tap the triangle button twice, you give two very short inputs to your controller. If you press the triangle twice without using the L1, the second input allows you to lift the ball just a bit from the ground but doesn't have any impact on the power of the pass. If you try it while holding on to the L1 button, the second input will also lose its impact on the adjustment of the pass as well and the only thing that matters will be the first input. So it's basically the same thing with the normal L1 triangle combo. The reason that people think this is much better and consistent is just because they have a consistent rhythm while trying to double tap it. That means they release the first tap always at the same time to get the second tap done. But since the second one doesn't matter, shortly tapping the triangle once will result in the same pass. Can you actually tell the input difference between those two passes once we actually blur out the controller inputs? Let us know what you think about it in the comment section below. We should also point out that this information has been confirmed by one of the EA game developers. So know that there is no difference between these inputs and they are both just the same lob through ball. So that's it for today's video. Just before closing it all up, we want to ask you what you think about the passing in general. Do you think it is too hard right now or have you been able to get used to it? Let us know what you think about it in the comment section below. We really hope you enjoyed this video. If so, feel free to drop a like as a sign of support. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't miss any upcoming FIFA 22 videos as there will be more videos coming in the following days. Also, feel free to check our brand new The Guide Plus application in which we provide weekly detailed tutorials with the addition of Boras Legends and its exclusive content. You can find the link to that down in the description. I'll talk to you on the next video. Until then, take care. Goodbye.